Hello everyone, welcome to the Stalwart Initiative. And we're back for another look at the newest Unearth Arcana 2020. This is Unearth Arcana 2020 Subclasses Part 5. Just came out on Monday and I'm super excited about it because it's really good and it's all dragon themed. So let's check it out. Um, these are two new subclasses here. This is the Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk and the Drake Warden Ranger. And boy, yeah, just, mm, mm, let's just go, let's just go. So the Way of the Ascendant Dragon is um, monks who follow the Way of the Ascendant Dragon revere the power and grandeur of dragons. They alter their own key to resonate with draconic might, channeling it to augment their prowess in battle, soar through the air, and to bolster their allies. As a follower of this monastic, monastic tradition, you decide how to how you unlocked the power of the dragons through your key. The Ascendant Dragon Origin Table offers some possibilities. And they, they like to put these, these randomized tables where you can pick and choose what you like. Just some ideas to get you going on how your, your origin came to be. Some pretty decent array of ideas there. Let's get to the features. So uh, at, first up at third level, when you get this subclass, you get Draconic Discipline. You, ch you can channel your draconic key to imbue your unarmed strikes with the essence of a dragon's breath and to use your connection with draconic creatures to magnify your presence. You gain the following benefits. Um, you get three, fe or three, three things here with this feature. First you get, when you damage a target with an unarmed strike, you can change the damage type to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. And next you get, if you can't already, you learn to speak, read, and write Draconic. So you get Draconic as a language. And third, you get, if you fail a, an Intimidation or Persuasion check, you can use your reaction to reroll the check as you tap into the mighty presence of dragons. Use this feature, once, I'm sorry, once this feature, uh, once this feature turns a failure into a success, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. This habit of reading ahead too far and it messed me up. Um, this is pretty cool. So a lot of this is is RP stuff with the um, with the charisma checks and also with learning draconic, uh, but also turning your unarmed strikes into giving these elemental properties is allowing you to bypass a lot of uh, physical resistances before you would already get it later on with your unarmed strikes. So nice, both a little bit of a a mix of. Um, of Marshall and RP. Um, now, here's the big one. Also, at third level, you get Breath of the Dragon. Uh, you, you can channel your key into destructive waves of energy, like the dragons you emulate. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can replace one of the attacks with an exhalation of draconic energy in either a 20-foot cone or a 30-foot line that is 5 feet wide. Your choice. Choose a damage type, as a cold, fire, lightning, or poison. Each creature in the area, uh, in yeah, in the area must make a dexterity saving throw against your key save DC, taking damage of the chosen type equal to two rolls of your martial arts die on a failure, or half as much on uh, half as much damage on a success. At eleventh level, the damage of your breath increases to three rolls of your martial arts die, and at this point, it, it's a D8. Your martial arts die is a D8. Um, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. While you have no uses available, you can spend one key point to use this feature again. I love this. I love this and it's so well implemented on, on multiple fronts here. Um, first up, it's unless they have something like evasion, the targets that, that fail the saving throw are taking guaranteed damage. Um, even if, even if they, I'm sorry, they're taking guaranteed damage as long as they don't have evasion. Uh, even if they, um, you know, even if they fail it, as long as they don't have some other feature, they're going to take some amount of damage and this could be multiple targets. The, giving the, giving a monk AOE like this is, is super beneficial because, because sometimes you get kited and you don't have the AOE effect that a lot of your spellcasting counterparts would have. Um, this is very cool. This is very cool. And it scales well with your martial arts die. At first, like, let's compare it to the, the Dragonborn. At first, the Dragonborn would do a little more damage than you. Um, but at 11th level, exactly at 11th level, actually, you will, um, from there on out, you scale the same as a Dragonborn's breath weapon, which they only get to use once per short rest. 
Um, if your party's taking a bunch of short rests per long rest, then then okay, then then that could equal out. But since this scales with your, with your proficiency bonus, you can automatically at level three use this twice per long rest. You don't have to short rest in between. I think this is a much better use of it. It's not forcing you and your party members to short rest for you to get this feature back. And it lets you use your key points to get it back as well. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, because at, at 11th level, you'll be able to do 3d8 and a Dragonborn can, can deal uh, 4d6, I believe. Yeah. And then when their scales, yours will max out at 3d10 and theirs is 5d6. So it's it's the same amount. You're going to scale pretty much the same once you hit level 11 as a Dragonborn and you can use it many more times than, than them. Very cool. Very cool. And giving you the key point option as well is, is excellent. So already at third level, oh, I'm digging it. So at sixth level, you get wings unfurled. When you use your step of the wind, you can unfurl spectral draconic wings from your back that vanish at the end of your turn. While the wings exist, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. While you have no uses available, you can spend one additional key point when you activate Step of the Wind to use this feature. Again, uh, same thing. It's it's scaling off your proficiency bonus, and it's giving you wings until the end of the end of turn when you're uh, when you're using Step of the Wind. Very cool, um, helping you be mobile and also yeah, not only around the battlefield, but you can you can also use this outside of the battlefield. So very cool. Very cool. And uh, allowing you to have key points to, to have further uses also. Uh, yeah, I love I love them giving you more, you know, even if you're using a form of currency, because Monk's currency is, is key points, and that's that's wonderful to add at the end. I like that. I really hate the um, once per long rest or once per short rest, and that's it. And you, you sh it should be, you should be able to sacrifice something else to, to get that ability to use it more. Very cool. Not every ability has to be that way. Some are so powerful that you should only use them once per long rest. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, next up, at 11th level, you get Aspect of the Worm. The power of your Draconic Key now radiates from you, protecting your allies from harm and punishing any who raise arms against them. As a bonus action, you can create an aura of Draconic Power that radiates 30 feet from you for one minute. Choose Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison damage, and for the duration, you gain the following effects. You and your allies within your aura gain resistance to the chosen damage type, and waves of destructive energy flow out from you and your allies when you are, or when any of you are attacked. When you or one of your allies is in the aura is hit by an attack made by another creature within the aura, the target that was hit can use their reaction to deal an amount of damage of the chosen type equal to one roll of your martial arts die to the attacker. So this is giving you and your allies within a 30 foot range, uh, I guess I'll get to the last little part here in a sec, um, giving you all resistance right off the bat to whatever damage type you choose out of those elemental types. This can be super beneficial, especially if the enemies you're fighting are all using one type of elemental damage, um, even in dragon fights. Who would have thought you can fight dragon as your dragon class? Nifty. Um, uh, the, the little part here in the end and the, the top of the next section is once you use this bonus action you can't use it again until you finish a long rest uh, unless you expend four key points to use it again it's a, it's a steep price but this is a 30 foot aura that stays with you in pretty much an entire combat and it helps you and all your allies gives you all resistance to this um, elemental type which you get to choose every time you, you do the aura and also it allows you and your allies to dish out um, dish out guaranteed elemental damage when things attack you inside the aura. Very cool feature. Very cool. Uh, I like it. Uh, next up, our capstone here is the 17th, at 17th level, you get Ascended Aspect. Ascended Aspect. Your Draconic Key reaches its peak. You gain the following benefits. Uh, you gain Blind Sight out to 30 feet. Within that range, you can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if you're blinded or in darkness. Moreover, you can see an invisible creature within that range unless the creature successfully hides from you. 
When you damage a creature with your Breath of the Dragon, the energy clings to the target. At the start of each of the creature's turns, it takes damage of the type your breath weapon dealt equal to one roll of your martial arts die. At the end of its turn, the creature can repeat the save, ending the effect on itself on a successful save. Um, when you activate your aspect of the worm, Draconic Fury explodes from you. Choose any number of creatures you can see within your aura. Those creatures each take 4d10 acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage. Your choice. A few things to unpack here. Um, so <laughs> right off the bat, the blind sight thing. Giving you blind sight out to 30 feet, making you be able to see in darkness. And it, does, it doesn't say you can't see in magical darkness. So in darkness, if you're blinded, this is the the old uh, monk tie the um, tie the bandana around your your eyes or the blindfold um, and fight fight blinded. You could do this. You know there are some characters out there who um, have dragon fighting. You know uh, and that do this. Wink, wink. Um, and also, this allows you to uh, give like a bleed damage to your to your Breath of the Dragon weapons, allowing the damage to continue in a smaller form after you've hit an enemy with it. Or the opportunity to, um, and uh, yeah, as it clings to them. And also, with your aspect of the worm, when you burst out that aura, you're also bursting out damage 4d10 of your chosen type. So it doesn't have to be the aura type, which is kind of cool. If you're fighting a dragon that's breathing fire, you know, or a creature you know has resistance to fire, um, but they also deal it. So you're you're bringing up your aura to protect you from fire, but that's not stopping you from using lightning damage or acid damage with this ability um, to explode and deal 4d10 damage to all the enemies in the aura. Uh, that's cool that they're not restricting it to the same type as the aura is. So very cool. Very cool. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. I am... Um, I'm very much looking forward to the the way of the Ascendant Dragon. I would say it, I it will probably be depending on how they change it for final. Um, as of right now, I would say it's probably my favorite monk, M maybe my favorite monk. We'll see. Have to play. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Ranger, and Ranger is also, in my opinion, another class that needs some love. And there, and I feel they're getting it here. Uh, it is the Drake Warden. Drake Wardens are rangers who use their magical connection with nature to form an enduring bond with a minor dragon, a drake. This bond allows the ranger to summon the drake to their side and to share in the awe-inspiring power wielded by dragons. Consider how your ranger gained their bond with the drake. The Drake Warden origin table offers some examples. Same thing as the monk. Um, gives you six examples here. Take a look at those. Pretty cool. So your first third level feature you get when you get this subclass is Draconic Gift. The bond you share with your Drake creates a deeper connection to dragon kind, granting you understanding and empowering your presence. The, you gain the following benefits. If you can't already, you learn to speak, read, and write Draconic, again with this subclass, and you learn the Thaumaturgy Cantrip, which is a ranger spell for you. Um, cool, giving you Thaumaturgy, you know, making you booming and giving you that presence. Uh, good ways to work with RP moments, especially since you're, you know, all dragon-like. Uh, and your other third level feature is Drake Companion, the main, the main feature of this subclass. Um, you can magically summon the Drake bound to bound to you. Well, yeah, commas should be there. As an action, you can summon the Drake, which appears in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. The Drake is friendly to you and your companions and obeys your commands. See its game statistics in the Drake Companion stat block, which uses your proficiency bonus, PB, in several places. When you summon the Drake, choose a damage type listed in its Draconic Essence trait. You can determine the cosmetic characteristics of the Drake, such as its color, scale texture, or any visible effect of its Draconic Essence. Your choice has no effect on its game statistics. In combat, the drake shares your initiative count, but it takes its turn immediately after yours. It can move and use its reaction on its own, but the only action it takes on its turn is the dodge action, unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take another action. Uh, that action can be one on its stat block or some other action. If you are incapacitated, the drake can take any action of its choice, not just dodge. 
Once you summon the drake, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you expend a spell slot of first level or higher to summon it. The drake remains for a number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus uh, until it is reduced to zero hit points, until you use this feature to summon the drake again, or until you die. Anything the drake was wearing or carrying is left behind when the drake vanishes. <sighs> okay, so um, I really like this. Unfortunately, uh, it is unfortunate that it only it only lasts a number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus. So. Sorry, there's no Drake, uh, especially early. There's no Drake guarding you while you uh, while you rest. Unfortunately, uh, it can for a while, and that does scale as your proficiency bonus scales. But uh, yeah, that is sad that it's only temporary. But let's take a look at the Drake, Drake statistics ever briefly. You can, or so briefly, you can take a look at these at your leisure as well. I'll link the I'll link this document in the description. Uh, so it starts out as a small Drake. 14 plus your proficiency bonus, so when you get at third level, it is a 2. So 16 AC at third level for a companion, that's pretty nice. Um, 5 plus 5 times your ranger level for its hit points, and its hit dies are D10, so that's cool. And yeah, you get uh, bonuses with your proficiency bonus. You can take a look at all these. Um, we'll just say some of the other features, though. So it has Draconic Acids, and when you summon the Drake, you choose a damage type, so that's the Acid uh, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. And then it, that type de determines its immunity. So it is flat out immune to that, which is great. Um, flat out immune to that damage. And it also adds that damage to its bite as part of the damage of its bite attack. And it's an infused strikes trait. So let's look at its actions. It has um, a bite attack for its action. And its attack is five, uh, three plus your proficiency bonus. So starting out at third level, that's plus five to hit. That's better than some of the uh, some of the beast companions that you would normally have, and has a reach of five feet. It deals one one d six piercing damage plus your proficiency bonus in whatever your draconic essence essence element you chose uh, when you summoned it. And it also has reaction of infused strikes when another creature within thirty feet of the drake that it can see hits with a weapon attack, and it is weapon attack. Uh, the drake infuses the strike with its essence, causing the attack to deal an additional 1d6 damage of the type determined by its draconic essence. So it can use its reaction every turn to give you or one of your allies a boost in elemental damage to your weapon attacks. Very cool. Very cool. At third level, that can come in handy. That's every turn, too. Only using reaction. Um, so at seventh level, you get Bond of Fang and Scale. The bond you share with your drake intensifies, protecting you and stoking the drake's fury. While your drake is summoned, you and the drake gain the following benefits. You gain resistance to the type, uh, to the damage type chosen for the drake's draconic essence, which is nice. And you uh, choose one of the following. The drake gains a swimming speed of 40 feet and can breathe air and water, or the drake grows wings and gains a flying speed of 40 feet. This is really cool. And the fact that you, even though it does go away, but when you resummon it, you can change this. You can change this multiple times a day on whether you, depending on whether you need it to have a flying speed or a swimming speed. Obviously, by default, you probably usually want, um, usually want a flying speed. I would, I thought it would have been cool if they would have added climbing onto the swimming part to make it a little more sexy. You know, I know it's it doesn't need it doesn't go with the gills and stuff, but um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have a climbing speed. Let me see. Do -do. Nope, just speed 40 feet. That would have been cool to add a climbing speed with the swimming speed. I'll put that in. When I do the survey, I'll put that uh, put that in there. You know, just to show it some love. So you're not always picking flying. Um, the Drake's Bite attack deals an additional 1d6 damage of the type chosen for its Draconic Essence. So you're, at, you're adding more damage on... Um, yeah, you're adding more damage onto its attack. Very cool, very cool. Making it more viable as you scale up. And at 11th level, you get Drake's Breath. Oh, love this part. As an action, you can exhale a 30-foot cone, which is bigger than the dragonborn and bigger than the monk, um, uh, of damaging breath, or cause your drake to exhale it. So this is cool. You get to choose, depending on your positioning, which which you want your, your drake to do it or you to do it. And choose acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage. Each creature in the cone must make a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC, taking 66 damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful save. 
This damage increases to 8d6 when you reach 15th level in this class. Uh, once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you expend a spell slot of 3rd level or higher to use it again. So at um, when you get this feature at 11th level, I believe you have three... Eh, let me see. I believe you have three uh, third level spell slots, but let me double check. Um, yeah, I know. Preparedness. Yeah, memory. What can I say? Okay, at 11th level you have... Yes, you've just gained your third third level spell slot. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, have, you, you can use this in three additional times with spell slots. Um, for a, well, it scales up to be a fireball worth of damage. This is great. 30-foot cone. Oh, crazy. Crazy. Very cool. I like it. And at 15th level for your capstone, you gain perfected bond. And it looks like there's only a little bit, but there's more. Uh, your bond to your drake reaches the pinnacle of its power. While your drake is summoned, you and the drake gain the following benefits. The drake grows to large size. I would, I would like... Uh, we'll go through the benefits and then we'll come back to this. The drake grows to large size. You can ride your pet drake. Oh, already, I'm already on it. Mm. It's sad you have to wait that long, 15th level, but here we go. Uh, the drake's bite attack deals an additional 1d6 damage of the chosen, for, the chosen type for the draconic essence. Uh, so it's totaling up an additional 2d6 of that, uh, of that elemental damage type extra. And when either you or the drake takes damage while you're within 30 feet of each other, you can use your reaction to give yourself or the drake resistance to that instance of damage. This is awesome because the drake can use its um, reaction every turn to boost damage for you or your allies for the weapon attacks. And now you can use your reaction to, um, to help protect you or, uh, you or your drake. Very cool. Very cool. I like it. So let's go back down to this. Um, the drake grows to large size. That is wonderful. Everybody wants to. I, I would want to ride a drake. This is great. This makes this. Uh, this makes this subclass over the top fantastic. But I think it should say the drake can grow to large size because there are many instances where you don't want a large drake um, toddling behind you. You know, if you're trying to do a mission uh, of intrigue or a spy mission or or whatever. I know a, a large drake is is top notch, but sometimes you want that subtlety of having that small drake. I think you should have it instead of it saying that um, it does grow. I would let my my players choose. But uh, yeah, that's it. Those are our two new subclasses. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Let me know what you think about these subclasses. I personally, I, I'm, I'm excited to play both of them and I'm usually not, I'm usually not a monk or a ranger kind of guy, but these have me intrigued, mm, super excited. So uh, yeah. Thank you very much for joining me, and we'll be back again soon for, for some more content, some more Unearthed Arcana when they bring in. It's been almost three months since we've had one bef uh, between the last one and this one. So excited. I'm hoping they keep turning them back out. And I will be doing tons of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything coverage coming up when it comes out next month. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, until next time, everyone, Uni is strength. So take care of each other, stay safe, and I'll see you again real soon.